Hi everyone, Menachem Brody here again for Human Vortex Training, talking to you today about winter bicycle riding outdoors and how to properly dress. We're going to talk about riding between 30 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, we're looking at freezing, literally, because of the ambient temperature. And again, like we talked about in our last segment of 40 to 50 degrees, we want to worry about the air temperature plus our moving speed as well. So. What are the two rules to being able to ride nice and safely and, and, and long periods of time in the winter? Stay dry and stay warm. So we're going to start with the base layers yet again. We want to have a wicking base layer. So what we have here, 30 to 40 degrees, uh, we want to have a little bit of a medium or heavier base layer. For me, my heavier base layer and my medium base layer are the Under Armour compression uh, cold gear. Uh, these are really great. I, I love these things. Uh, they wick the sweat away very well. They also have bike specific um, base layers out there that do an even better job that are made for cycling and are designed ergonomically for you. Uh, Castelli, Giordano, I believe, had them. As Asos has them. Uh, Cannondale. So you can look around and see uh, what type of base layer you want. But we want it to be moisture wicking. Again, my personal that I like to use is Under Armour. I also wear this uh, when I work on the ambulance during the winter keeps me nice and warm, uh, especially when we're on, on, on site for quite a period of time. So uh, base layer, you want to have something nice and medium to heavy depending on your type of sweating. I am a heavy sweater, so I like to have a medium base layer which will keep me warm but not toast me. So on top of that, what do we want to have? Well, we talked last time about arm warmers, which you can wear with that on top of that base layer, and you can also have a summer jersey. However, uh, if you have the money, what I would strongly encourage you to do is purchase a medium to heavy uh, winter jersey. And here we have the uh, About Time Cycling uh, jersey from 2011. This is our, our winter jersey, which is fleece on the inside. It is a long sleeve here, uh, and it's something that has a medium neck, which is going to help kind of keep the, the air out, but not too, too much. So uh, we want to look at it. A nice medium or heavy base layer depending on how heavy you sweat and then you can also have a long sleeve jersey on top this is when we're getting to temperature range where it may take you a couple times to get it right so ride a smaller loop of about 45 minutes an hour depending on your, your uh, capabilities and level um, and making sure that you're you're not sweating too much and kind of toy with this so you may want to do a medium base layer with a summer jersey on top of it with a wind shell, which we talked about last time. Again, this is waterproof and windproof, so no water in means no water out. This does not breathe. Or what you can do is something along the lines of either, again, if you're a light sweater and you don't like heavy, heavy clothing, you can use something like this Asos uh, Pro, Pro Line. Um, this is a windproof front and is an aerated back. So this is something that also has pockets on the back as well which I really love for winter jerseys. Now let's say you want to go all out. You want to wear a, a base layer, a nice base layer, and you just want to have one other piece of equipment on your upper body. What you can do is you can spend the extra money and you can purchase a heavy winter layer jacket. This is the University of Pittsburgh cycling team's uh, official garb. Uh, what, the reason why this is nice is because we can wear this just with the base layer because it has a nice fleece lining on the inside nice and heavy it has windproof front with arms that breathe and I know some of you are saying why would I want the arms to breathe trust me this is incredibly incredibly comfortable it has sleeves that close off at the bottom so the air can't come up and my favorite part of this is that it has the pockets on the back of it and there you can see pitcycling.com is their website and the nice panther on the back so uh, it breathes on the back this is not windproof and then the best part, again, as you guys will, will learn from me, is it has the double zipper so we can aerate. Now, the thing that puts this Champs' jacket over the top is the fact that the bottom of it is not windproof. So the part that's not being ex exposed, the part that's being folded down because you're leaning forward, is actually cloth. And I found that with this particular jacket, is extremely comfortable. I, I love this jacket. As you can see, it's been well worn. And like I said last time, I love winter riding. It's my favorite time, aside from late spring, uh, to be out and ride in the cool, crisp air. So this, with the medium base layer, um, is my favorite piece of equipment to ride 30 to 40 degrees for my upper body. And again, it's about finding your personal comfort level. So some of you may find that uh, a long sleeve winter jersey, a medium or heavy winter jersey um, with, with a, a windproof vest or a windproof front may be enough for you. Now, what about our bottom? 
Again, like we talked last time, we want to have something, we don't necessarily want to wear the summer bibs because they're very thin and that will allow air to come in and it can be really cold down there. So uh, between the, the temperature range of 30 and 40, again, it's personal preference. For me, it depends on the day and the wind and what type of route I'm going to be riding. If I'm going to be doing hills, I personally like to wear the knickers. These are the Jordana knickers that I showed last time. And again, they're nice and fleece on the inside. Uh, the bib on the back is a little bit bigger than a summer, so it covers a little bit more, but allows it to breathe. And you have the, the chamois inside, or the padding is going to be a little bit heavier to not let air through yet again. So this is a great piece of equipment when I'm going to climb hills or rollers or we will not be down by the rivers uh, or where it's windy for a prolonged period of time, I will wear these with that winter jacket that I just showed you uh, and a medium base layer. Now the other option is, and for when we're going on windy rides or we're going to be out longer, um, I will wear the full length, and these have zippers on the bottom to keep them closed, the full length um, bib or long shorts, uh, long bib shorts uh, that we can wear. And again, it has a breathable top because they figure at this point you're going to be wearing a medium to heavy base layer. So we don't want this to be too heavy. But if you notice here, as soon as that goes away, we have this, the fleece here. And then as we go down, it has that heavy bib yet again. And then we have fleece all the way down in through the legs. And the reason why this has a zipper at the bottom is because we can allow this to close it off and keep ourselves nice and warm. So the long uh, pants or the, the long bib shorts are great for windy rides or when you're going to be out for a prolonged period of time between 30 and 40 degrees. Uh, we'll see these again when we get below 30 degrees, between 20 and 30 degrees. Uh, but those are the two basic bottoms that I like to recommend for people. Uh, now, if you're living in a windy area, you can also use a windproof front, which we're going to save for the uh, below 30 degree riding is going to be the gloves that you want to wear and the, and protecting the digits, the fingers and the toes. So we talked last time about having uh, the windproof front, which are really important for the gloves. Uh, and we also talked a little bit about having the hand warmers, which are incredibly beneficial. And remember, open these while you're getting dressed because they, the chemical air, uh, hand warmers and toe warmers do need the air to be able to, to warm up. It's a chemical reaction. So uh, the windproof uh, gloves that we have here, I will personally wear these down to about 35 degrees. Once we get down to 35, or if I'm going to be out for a long period of time, I wear these really nice Jordana heavy winter gloves. Now, I don't wear these quite as often as I used to. I prefer to wear the lobster gloves, which have just one split here, or some of them even have these three digits um, together, the, the pinky ring and middle finger, and then just these two fingers separate, the thumb and the index finger, because really, if you think about it, that's all you're using to move, and by keeping the fingers together like this, yes, you don't have the dexterity, but you can still reach back and get a goo pack. You won't be able to feel it quite as well, but you'll be able to get the goo pack and keep your fingers warmer. Again, with these, you can see that they're, they have strategic uh, areas of grip, so around the bar, around the thumb, and around the finger. So we have our trigger fingers here to change the gears. And if you're wearing SRAM, you'll use both of these. Uh, and then we also have it our, on our thumbs to help us as well if you're riding Campagnolo or Campy as they call it, so you're able to press down and not slip off. So these are our nice thick gloves you can see on the inside. Again, I don't wear these five finger gloves as much. I was a beginner when I purchased these. So now I wear, I use the lobster gloves, which actually the ones that I have are like this, which I've loaned out, or these, which I wear uh, when it's really cold outside, which keep you a lot warmer. Again, I like to put that, that uh, hand warmer right in that crease our main artery, so that's going to warm the blood before it gets to your, your fingers and as it's coming out, the veins on the back side there, um, but that will warm it and not affect your ability to grab uh, or, or guide the bike over rough patches. So really important piece of equipment are nice, warm, wind-proof gloves. And again, you can see these come up a little bit higher on me, and when you combine that, again, with this great jacket from Pit Cycling, um, these sleeves come down and they keep closed so no air can get in and they, they layer over one another so we don't get any wind coming up the sleeve. Again, we want to stay warm and dry. Dry being number one. Dry and warm and that will help keep you dry and warm. So that's the glove side of thing. Um, so keeping the hands nice and warm, really important because otherwise you can't steer your bike and frostbite is serious. If you, if you get frostbite, it, it is a, a medical emergency and there is a proper and improper way to thaw your, your fingers and toes out. Speaking of toes, Starting at the first layer for the toes, we can go with either a medium layer sock, which is these, and I would consider these medium, uh, especially because they're only ankle high. Uh, when you're getting down to uh, 30 to 40 degrees, you want to really start to think about coming above the ankle. And again, we saw with our, our long um, bib shorts here that come all the way down, they have a zipper, and this 
sock actually comes all the way up here, you guys can see here, uh, and so the zipper actually sits about a half an inch below where that sock is inside. So again, we're making an airproof seal so nothing's coming in and making us cold. And these are Cannondale. Again, you see they have the nice support for the inner uh, insole, um, medial and lateral arch, and they also have a little support for the transverse arch on the bottom as well, which are the three major major arches on the bottom of our foot, although there are more. So this comes up nice and high, 30 to 40 degrees, anything below uh, freezing, you definitely want to wear a, a high, uh, heavy wool sock to keep your digits nice and warm. Now, so that's the, outer, the inner layer. What about the outer layer? Well, there are a lot of different options that we have. If you live in the northeast here, uh, or an area where it tends to get really cold for long periods of time, I would strongly recommend purchasing a, a pair of winter riding shoes. And what those are, uh, the CD Hydrolite 2 are the ones that I personally wear. Uh, again, I, I don't have those here with me. Uh, I have the mouse wear. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but they'll look a little bit like this. This is just my regular summer road shoe that has a Castelli neoprene sleeve over it. But the CD Hydrolite will be a shoe that'll have neoprene on the inside. It's waterproof, airproof. And that's really important because down here on the bottom of summer shoes, you actually have vents that allow uh, air to come in. So no matter how much you put on top of the shoe here, because they're made for summer, spring, and fall to vent well, uh, unless you get a proper winter shoe and they'll run you between four and $600 for a good pair, um, you're still gonna have some airflow coming into that. And there are ways that you can close that off on the inside with uh, packaging tape, not duct tape, but packaging tape. You can close those off. But uh, if you have the money or you're riding cold enough, I do recommend purchasing winter shoes. Now, if you're not going to purchase winter shoes, again, we talked about putting the, the packaging tape. You have to take the insole out, put the packaging tape. You'll see the vents on the bottom, just regular packaging tape that's approved by the United States Postal Service. And you want to cover the front vents as well. And then you can put the neoprene sleeve over. This is for 30 to 40 degrees outside. Um, this is going to be heavy. It's waterproof. Uh, it's going to keep you nice and warm. Uh, and again, you want to see it. It's going to come all the way around the back and up over the ankle. So again, we're thinking about making a windproof, waterproof, as much as possible seal around the ankle. So those, um, the, the bottoms of these pants are actually going to come inside of this. Uh, that way water can't come uh, over them. Some people like to put them over. I personally like them in. Uh, and then I will close this on top to create an airproof seal almost, or air resistant seal, so that we're not getting anything coming in. So this is a neoprene Castelli cover. There are lots of different brands out there. This is the one that I personally recommend that I like. I've had these for three years. They work really well. Now, if you uh, have the heavy sock and you're a heavy foot sweater, which some of us are, uh, you can even go with what we saw at 40 to 50 degrees, and those are the Castelli windproof water resistant covers. Uh, this is for when it's not wet outside, uh, uh, down on the ground. Again, the neoprene is going to be much warmer. It's the same thing that, that wetsuits are made out of, and there's a reason why USA Triathlon uh, regulates that. You, you must have a wetsuit on at certain degrees because it helps regulate your temperature. This doesn't as well, does not as well as neoprene. This will give you a little bit of warmth, but again, it's windproof, water resistant, or waterproof. Um, depending on where the seam is. And this is these can also be used uh, for time trials as well, for uh, knocking the wind down, but your feet will sweat. But this is a great piece of equipment to put over your already existing summer shoes. You can put a little bit of packaging tape uh, underneath the, uh, the bottom of the shoe there, underneath the, the insert. Uh, and this is really important to remember because there are vents down there. Uh, and as you'll see, um, even uh, I have here the specialized shoe beds. Uh, they do ventilate in here uh, to allow air to come in. And you can't see it in the shoe, but uh, there is a vent on the bottom so you want to put the packaging tape over that sticky side down of course and then put your shoe bed right back in and your shoes back together so that's 30 to 40 degrees uh, I hope you guys got a lot out of this if you have any questions feel free to post them below but that is 30 to 40 degrees and I will see you guys for 30 degrees and below remember train smarter not harder and it's all about you ride safe and enjoy the winter cold